everybody loves racing games and some of us like racing sims. What we're going to do today is find out just how simulating and how realistic racing games are. And it's actually not something I'm going to do today. I'm here at the Nürburgring for the entire weekend. Today we're going to drive the GP track behind me in the freezing cold and later today it should be rather sunny. And then uh, tomorrow the Nordschleife which is right behind us. Let's just talk about the car we're going to use. We're going to use a Mazda MX-5. It's a completely stock car, um, just to make it a bit easier to compare. It's pretty much my favorite car for tracks like this. Uh, it's not very fast, but it's a lot of fun. After that, what we're going to do is drive in a broad range of racing simulators and tell you what the top 5 is. For this video, the games we're going to use are Assetto Corsa, Project Cars, and R Factor. Now those games technically aren't finished yet because we're using R Factor 3 as well and a set of course I still in early access. Um, so the games aren't really finished but then we're gonna make up for that by also going with Race Room and iRacing. So that those are pretty much the five um, most recommended racing simulators that you can actually just afford because no one can afford a, a custom R Factor Pro uh, setup. Um, so yeah, those are the games we're going to use. If you're thinking, why don't you include Forza Motorsport, Gran Turismo, um, Grit, uh, Need for Speed? Well, they're not really simulators to the extent that these are simulators. They're more realistic, some of them, um, than others, but they're not at all racing simulators. And that's kind of the entire purpose of this video. Alrighty guys, let's start off with Assetto Corsa, um, build 0.7.5, uh, we maxed out the graphics, um, it kind of looks a bit shaky, but in gameplay I was getting good enough um, FPS, it's just my hard drives can't keep up with the, uh, the bandwidth. Uh, we're driving a, a BMW uh, M3, the old one, um, and AC, and then in real life we're driving the, uh, the Mazda as we said earlier. Um, again, you have to keep in mind that the games are mostly made um, to look like they do in summer when most racing leaks happen. Um, whereas we drove it um, in the middle of March, um, almost winter, kind of, actually, you know, it is winter, but whatever. Um, so, let's start off with the good things about Assetto Corsa. Um, good things are the graphics are... Um, pretty decent. Uh, they're not as good as other games but they really help you with um, figuring out where the corner is, where the breaking point is. It's not like everything looks perfectly flat and you can't see the corner. Um, a set of course is pretty good at that. If you compare it to real life um, it's almost the same um, you know despite the field of view being different on the QX100 camera versus the, the virtual camera standpoint. Everything looks a bit elongated in a AC, but I'm sure you can fix that with uh, field of view settings. Um, another really good thing is uh, everything is laser scanned, so the tracks are accurate to within the millimeter. Of course, a lot of that accuracy gets lost once they put it in the game or you'd end up with a download that's hundreds and hundreds of gigabytes and you know no one can actually use it in a useful way um, to have all the detail and you know by um, letting go of some of that detail it does feel a bit too smooth almost um, which is then already a bad point and I said I was going to do um, positives first but yeah graphics are decent um, the physics are really really good the car feels pretty much like a car feels and like you expect a car to feel um, so that's very very good and I would definitely recommend this game as I said multiple times before but yeah the bad things are that everything is a bit slightly bit too smooth it's not as bad as other games um, but it's a bit too smooth and then once there is some input coming through the wheel again um, that's a bit too harsh um, because force feedback in games for some reason is way harder than it should be and everyone keeps ramping up their force feedback settings as to be as strong as it can possibly get and that's not really necessary um, yeah but that was pretty much it for AC so 
you know, positives, good graphics, great physics, uh, negatives slightly, uh, tiny little bit too smooth um, to actually be perfect. Um, we're now going to move on to um, Project Cars, which has that smoothing issue uh, times a quadrillion or something. Um, just look at the camera here while we go through um, Carousel and look at how smooth the suspension is working on the KDRM in um, Project Cars. Uh, in the game, it's like it's perfectly smooth, brand new asphalt that they put there. In real life, it's like your your neck and your back is gonna break. As maybe your car as well because there are so many vibrations there. Now, when I say stuff like that, I don't actually mean it's terribly bad. I mean Project Cars has really, really uh, probably the best force feedback of any game and you kind of need it because with a real car like 70% of what you feel is just coming through your butt and then another 20 is I don't know like how your body feels g-forces um, in a game you don't have that all you really have is some sound um, graphics which are pretty good in, in project cars and um, you know a tiny bit of force feedback which in no game is accurate no matter how expensive the wheel is just it's just not the same thing so um, let's then talk about sound project car sound is pretty good um, especially with the more finished car because some cars still have the placeholder um, audio profiles uh, of course you know it's pre-alpha so what did you expect anyway um, but then you know graphics that's really the key thing with project cars isn't it they call it the most beautiful racer in the world um, they're probably right. Um, this is maxed out um, footage, uh, other than anti-aliasing, because I can run it with it maxed out, but I can't record with everything maxed. So sorry about that. Um, you might see that the colors aren't real, and that there are uh, a lot more leaves on the trees. Obviously, again, because of um, the time of the year uh, being different in the game than it is in uh, reality. Um, you know, summer to winter and even though in Project Cars you can set uh, what date you're running at, it only changes the angle of the sun and such, um, and you know what time it gets dark, that sort of stuff. Uh, it doesn't actually change the vegetation because you know that would be incredibly complex to do. Um, so yeah, Project Cars really really great. A bit sad that the road feels too smooth, even smoother than AC, not as smooth as some other games, but yeah. Uh, once you get, you know, with different cars, it, it does get a bit better. Maybe in the game, the KDRM suspension is just too soft. Who knows? Um, I haven't driven a KDRM before, so, yeah. Um, but it's it's really, really good. In my opinion, slightly better than Assetto Corsa, but that's for the conclusion part. Um, now we're going to move on to iRacing, which doesn't have uh, either of the Nürburgrings, so it's just going to be some gameplay and some talking from me. I racing is probably the most realistic uh, racing game in here but that also comes with a few bad things and we're gonna start off with them um, the problem with I racing is that the uh, the GUI is complete shit it's um, impossible to play on your on your own and have some choice there's no AI in this game so you only have uh, racing and that's pretty much what it does uh, say it says i racing so it's just internet racing it's you racing online as if you were to have a real career um, and real careers don't really come with a GUI apparently I mean there is clickable stuff on everything but it's just not as you know easy to use as every other game in this video even the older ones um, which is quite sad because the physics engine in it is brilliant um, everything feels quite good um, the tracks are all laser scanned, but with proper detail, you really feel that the car has weight to it. It's a really good game, um, physics-wise. But then again, you know, too bad it's not very user-friendly. It's also quite expensive, probably the most expensive of the bunch uh, when you play it for a long period. 
All right, we're back at the Nurburgring this time in uh, race 07, which is the same as GTR Evo and all of those expansion packs. Um, so they're just um, further improvements on GTR 2, which is a brilliant game, absolutely brilliant game. And this just improves on everything. Um, to be honest, it's it's pretty much it feels perfect. You know the. It really makes you feel like you're in a real car, um, just like iRacing does, and it can be a problem with other games. But the, the car feels like it has weight, it has inertia, the track feels like it's alive. It's really, really good, but it's, you know, old graphics aren't anything to write home about, really. The, not to say they're downright bad, I mean, it's, a, it's an eight-year-old game almost, so, well, seven-year-old game, but... Yeah, it is really, really good though. Um, great community behind it, a lot of mods for GTR uh, games. Um, there's also the newer version of it using a similar engine, and pretty much just a further evolution on it, um, called Race Room Experience. Uh, I have the same thoughts about that game, uh, except that it sucks that it's um, free to play, because stuff that's free to play is never free to play. You just have to spend massive, massive amount of money on it to get different cars and everything um, so I don't like that part about it but this one race 07 with all the expansion packs um, pretty good physics wise um, and racing wise you get decent AI as well uh, which we didn't have earlier on in uh, iRacing and it just makes for uh, great fun okay uh, our factor it's um, Probably, you know, R Factor has also the best engine. You know, R Factor Pro is used by professional teams uh, with custom simulators, and this isn't too far off of it. So, you'd think it's the best game. It's just so old. It's so incredibly old. The graphics are terrible. It's r very hard to configure stuff. Uh, when you do get it right eventually, it's, it's brilliant, but it takes so long to actually get stuff right that. I can't possibly give it, you know, a top three place later on. But I, I do really like the game though. Uh, it's just, you know, outdated. And then you'd think when they made R Factor 2 that they would improve on those bad points. But instead, what they did is improve on what's already brilliant. And, you know, it's still. I mean, I like a proper layout with a game, I, I really do, and I, I want a game um, that when you play it, it's easy to use, uh, easy to set up, and R Factor is just none of those. Um, it's just a brilliant physics engine, incredible detail in how stuff feels and everything, but it's just not my game, which is, as you can see, why I, don't, why I haven't bought it, and I'm just playing the demos here. Um, to demonstrate it, so if this, if you think this is your type of game, just in almost unlimited modifying options and customizability, then go get it. And if you don't think that's your your type of game, just don't. Um, so that brings us to our last game, which is game number six. And I said I was only going to do a top five, um, but then I saw Sim Raceway was printed in large letters on my wheel, uh, so I, I kind of have to have to put it in because it is. In my opinion, one of the better games uh, when it comes to physics. Uh, also, this is a Miata, like I drove one, but this is just a, no, a newer model. Um, so it feels slightly different, but it's quite, you know, close to the real thing. Um, graphics aren't anything spectacular, but it it really is a great game. Plus, it's free to play, which I kind of hate, but at the same time, it's kind of cool because. There is a point system that means you don't have to actually spend money on it. And the guys from Sim Raceway are you know, really cool guys. They're also located at an actual racetrack like Assetto Corsa. Um, these guys are at Sonoma. Assetto Corsa is at Vallelunga, I think. Um, or Magioni, I don't, I don't quite remember. Um, but yeah, they're just great game um, too bad the graphics aren't up 
you know, with the best, but it really is quite fun. It's um, somewhat hard to uh, configure multiple input devices at the same time though, especially when you have um, multiple steering wheels that you're trying to use at the same time. Alright folks, time for a conclusion and we're just going to go from the bottom of the list all the way to the top to find out what, according to me, if you care about my opinion, um, is the best racing simulator available at the moment um, or in the near future. So 20 2014 best sim, let's just call it that. Uh, at number five, I'm going to put Sim Raceway. Um, it's free to play, it's easy to get involved in, great um, guys supporting it, uh, making it, but not really a lot of players on it, which kind of sucks, but if you all go and play it, it will get better. Um, you know, that's just the way stuff works. So, Sim Raceway at number five. At four, I'm going to put um, the GTR series as well as Race Room um, because again great physics which is the main point of this video uh, stuff feels very very good but it's outdated um, so just like R Factor which I can already say hasn't made it into the list uh, because it's so outdated and unusable now number three is for iRacing now, I know a lot of you are going to say, but it's the best racing sim out there, and I completely agree, but as a game, user friendliness, it's nowhere. It took me incredibly long just to get the wheel configured. Um, setting stuff up is really hard, but it does come with great community races, uh, organized events, um, you can track all of your races back, which is great, which is why it gets third place, which, you know, if you're the third best um, racing sim according to me then you know that's something right at number two we're gonna put uh, a set of Corsa um, because they're almost there the physics are just amazing in a set of Corsa the way the cars feel is again amazing everything's amazing um, it's just a bit too bad that I don't think um, it's gonna have enough content uh, later on and the graphics are a bit meh you know um, everything looks a bit, it's, it's spot on, don't get me wrong, everything's perfect, but it's not that extra bit that you would need to get the best game. Um, but, you know, what, they're going to put more work in it, it's going to get better. Um, but so is our number one game, Project Cars, which is not even in alpha state yet. I mean, like, what are they, they going to do with the, the end result? The, the tire models are brilliant. Uh, almost as brilliant as a set of Corsa's tire model, but there's still way more room for improvement with Project Cars. The graphics, um, the way it makes the hills feel, because that's just... Everything looks flat in games, no matter how you know you set stuff up, everything looks quite flat. And Project Cars has the best elevation change. And as you saw in the, the video, uh, where we compared Project Cars to real life at the Nordschleife, um, even on camera in real life it looked nowhere near as steep as it is in real life but then once you actually drive there you can just come up a corner and not see anything uh, or just see a wall in front of you which it is great in real life and Project Cars gets quite close to that uh, not perfect yet but quite close but to me the main reason to give Project Cars um, the first place is uh, quite simply because of the way you can use it. You just install it, you say I'm using that wheel, press some buttons and it's configured. Everything is configurable, you have a bunch of sliders and settings but you don't have to use them. If you don't want to use them you just leave them where they're at. Uh, you use default profiles and everything's just you know great. But then when you're like me and you have modified wheels and pedal sets um, it just becomes easy to use, way easier than everything else and if you add great physics, not the best because those are for eye racing uh, but great physics, uh, the best graphics um, you know, quite good sound as well um, then I think Project Cars kind of just deserves first place overall uh, anyway, if you like the video press the like button, if you dislike the video press dislike please subscribe to Unicorn Reviews and leave a comment thank you all very much for watching